So uh, we talk about immunity. We have different types of immunity, namely active and passive. Active immunity is the one that we mentioned before. If you get a uh, flu, then later on, after you get the flu, after you go through five to seven days of the uh, non-specific responses, and when your body start to start the adaptive uh, immune responses, meaning that when your body start the making the antibody, then um, then you will get the active immunity. Or if you get the flu shot, then you will get the active immunity. So you have to go through the infection first. And then passive immunity is something that you don't go through infection or you don't get the vaccine. It is, uh, but you get the antibody body directly by injection or so-called naturally. Naturally, like um, when, when a mother is nursing the baby, the milk from the mother will contain the antibody of the mother. So that when the baby uh, drink the milk, the baby will, uh, will receive or acquire the antibody directly from the mother without getting the infection. So the antibody from the mother's milk will protect the baby. So active immunity, so uh, the person is infected by an antigen, but it can be induced artificially by immunization, that's why we get the vaccine. Um, they are the genetically engineered micro mass produced antigen. Um, so they are safe, they won't cause the non-specific immune responses, but they will um, they will, they will let the B cell and T cell to form the memory cells. So this graph is very important because I teach a physiology student about this graph as well. It explains most of the active immunity. So first exposure, I told you that this is like your first infection. Um, when your classmate coughing sneezing next to you, then what happened? Um, it will actually the actually is a little bit wrong. It should start around here, so that you have five to ten days, and you have five to ten days of the non-specific five to seven days of non-specific response: fever, coughing sneezing, uh, uh, running nose. Then after five to seven days, then your body starts to acquire uh, the, the adaptive immunity or the specific immune response to, uh, to produce antibody. So at this point, your body will stop the fever, the, the flu-like symptoms. You think that you are healthy, you recover, but actually you are still infected. It's just that your body uh, is secreting antibody here to fight the infection for you, but you are still infected. Therefore, if your family member or if your friends telling you that, oh, I just recovered from my flu yesterday, don't get close to him or her, because he or she is still infected with the virus. It's just that they are, the antibody is uh, fighting the war for them. So, um, so the first infection should be before this should be higher here. And then, um, what else? So this is, after you finish the first, uh, after you finish the first infection, then later on, no matter how long the time is, you'll get a second uh, infection. If you get a second infection, if it is the same strain of the, of the pathogen, then the memory cell can immediately, so the, the arrow here is correct, the memory cell can immediately secrete a massive amount of uh, an antibody to fight for the same infection for you so that you don't need to go through the uh, uh, flu-like symptoms. Uh, vaccine is the same case. After you get the vaccine, the handout, the vaccine information sheet tells you that it will take five to seven days for the vaccine to uh, work. It is because it takes five to seven days for your adaptive immunity or the specific immune response to 
to start making the antibody. Once your body starts to make antibody, that means your body also starts to make memory cell. So the next time when the, you get the flu of the same strain, then the memory cell can start to secrete an uh, antibody to fight the infection for you. Okay, we have the passive immunity. Passive immunity, I told you that it can, you can acquire the passive immunity by natural process. Um, you can, it can be through the uh, mother's milk, or the mother's antibody can cross the placenta to go into the baby to uh, give the uh, fittest baby, to give the uh, fittest um, uh, uh, basic immune uh, defense. But these passive immunity, they're temporary because the antibody is not produced by the baby. Uh, it is given by the mother. In this case, um, um, when the antibody is being broken down by the baby, then the immunity, the, uh, it will be gone. Um, through mother's meal during the fetal stage, this is the third way that we didn't talk about in the previous slide, is that antibody can be injected. Yes, we can get the antibody by injection. Okay, cytokine. I told you that it's a cell signaling molecule, cell to cell signaling molecule. Um, but we can use cytokine um, what do we do? We can use cytokine to stimulate uh, red blood cell production in cancer patients, um, but this treatment will um, affect the bone marrow, or it can help treatment of the cancer by stimulating immune response. We can use interferon. Uh, interferon is a form of cytokine uh, to tell the immune system to fight or inhibit cancer growth or inhibit the virus that causes cancer. Remember we talked about the HPV virus? It is the uh, virus that causes cervical cancer. So what are the um, uh, monoclonal antibody, monoclonal antibody, they are the antibody made by the same group of B cells. Um, they are the antibody that uh, is produced by the B cell to fight specifically one type of antigen. And we have something called hybridomas. What is hybridomas? Hybridoma is basically a man-made cell. We scientists combine the antigen producing cell, it can be a plasma cell, it can be uh, other lymphoid, lymph, lymphoid cell, lymphocyte. It can be other lymphocyte that produce antibody with a um, myeloma cell. What is myeloma cell? Myeloma cell, they are cancerous plasma cell. They are cancerous plasma cell, meaning that they are the plasma cell that cannot die. So by combining the antibody producing cell with the cancerous uh, plasma cell, then those cells, they will not die, they will just keep on making antibody of what you want. So you can, the antibody we make, we can use it in many different ways. They can use it for diagnosis. Um, they can use it for drug delivery. They can use it for identify an uh, infection. So this is how we make the uh, uh, an monoclonal antibody. Uh, it is very similar to the biotechnology lecture that we we went through uh, last time. So you um, inject um, uh, the antigen uh, into the mouse, and then so that we take the spleen the cell from the spleen that are making the antibody now, and it fills it with the myeloma cell, the cancerous plasma cell, and after it fills them, then uh, we culture these cells so that these cells will start to grow, 
not only they will uh, continue to grow, they will also continue to, uh, they will start to make the antibody. And that will, but not all the cell is successful. Some of the cell may die, some of the cell they may survive, but they do not produce antibody. Only a few cells, they will survive and produce antibody. Then we harvest those cells, and then we clone them, meaning that we let them grow, so that all these cells will be making the same antibody. And then at the end, we harvest those cells and purify the antibody. And then the drug company can sell those antibodies 